we need gender equality in the world. It's the right thing to do from a rights perspective. It's the smart thing to do from an economic perspective. And it's the fair thing to do because we are equal. Positive girl and boy development is the process of taking into consideration the challenges and opportunities that girls, boys, and youth of diverse gender identities have at different life stages. Here are some recommendations that came out of the thoughts and discussions at the Gender 360 Summit that we had in June 2018. One recommendation around gender would have to be moving beyond the binary. For young people, one of the ideas that always comes up is there is a boy and there is a girl. Sometimes we even see that come up when we have things like positive girl development, positive boy development. But what we know about all of that is there's a young person beyond all of that. So positive youth development, what does that look like? People live and exist in the identities within themselves. So we should empower young people to support their own gender identities, whether they have a gender at all, whether they have more than one gender, my recommendation is that we should disrupt the system, the cultural norms and the religious norms and the societal values and thoughts around what boy is and what girls are. And we need to do that by first of all checking ourselves as organisations and the language that we use around young people and uh, ensuring that uh, they are at the centre so that they are the stakeholders, not beneficiaries. I would recommend that Educationists should engage more with girls and boys with the mindset of preparing them for expanded career options and for them to be able to meet their future aspirations and opportunities and compete globally, as well as infusing parent engagement in the entire process so that girls and boys have the support they need at home and then getting into school, getting all the support they need. One recommendation is supporting young people, supporting young people's access to sexual health equity, comprehensive sexuality education, just moving beyond the aspect that there's a boy and a girl and supporting young people throughout whatever they decide to be. Como recomendação para melhorar o acesso dos adolescentes, jovens, rapazes e raparigas dos serviços de saúde, era importante que nós percebêssemos quais é que são as barreiras que eles enfrentam para não acederem a esses serviços. Sabendo quais é que são as barreiras, é muito mais fácil traçar estratégias concretas que possam facilitar e melhorar o acesso desses adolescentes aos diferentes serviços de saúde. If we want to promote gender equality among boys and girls and for other gender diverse people, we have to listen to their differences, including sexual orientation, gender identity and gender expression. And we have to ensure that all of these issues are well integrated in all interventions in order to reduce their vulnerability to HIV and other health disparity and to better promote the health outcomes among these populations. Also, look at gender-based violence and people with disability are not left out because most of us people with disability, especially the girls, the young girls with disability are the most vulnerable. Most of us become raped, victims, victims of domestic violence. Some of us become victims of domestic violence as well, victims of child abuse. We have to think of how to bring these people together through good programs that is designed that will help them. When considering uh, gender-based violence, it's really important, at least from my perspective, not only to think of the physical threat and safety against youth, but also how this is impacting youth in areas such as education and the health sector and economic empowerment. As much as feminism needs men, men need feminism too. Patriarchy in a way harms both men and women. One of the um, issues with harmful masculinity is, is like men uh, being forbidden in a way from society to express their emotions and actually be themselves. Okay, so I think it's important to include the disability organization and those DPOs when developing a project for children and youth, specifically boys and girls with disabilities. And when you're considering the budget, make sure that you consider intersectionality and collect data that shows clear indicators of what 
those disabilities and intersectionalities are. So I think there's some steps that we can take right away when it comes to policy and how it's affecting positive girl and boy uh, development. The first one is to recognize, um, educate, and dissect the current regulations and policies that exist and question them. We have to hold feet to the flames when it comes to the government and institutions that are instituting these policies to make sure that they are protective and continue to keep the main focus as positive girl and boy development.